Um, we're going to sing one uh, quick little song. We're going to do a little town of Bethlehem. And then uh, we're going to invite Pastor Bob to uh, read the Christmas story for us. And then we'll just go back to fellowship, fellowshipping. So, Roy? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. This is for the people in the back. When Jeff asks if you want to read the Christmas story, look where I'm standing. Okay, so that, that's for next year. Make a note of that. Okay, I've got to, I've got to apply technology here. So. How's the volume for everyone? Too loud? Perfect. Okay. Love it. Is that good? So I can see. Silver tongue. So this time of year, the Christmas story is usually built around many different things. Many of those things are not built around Jesus Christ. Christmas time is the celebration of his birth. But I'm going to tell you a story about this birth that happened over 2,000 years ago. And we speak about it still today. This birth was historic. And by historic, I mean that it was not a made-up story, it really happened. This birth was much like yours and mine. However, this birth was talked about, even anticipated, years before Mary ever showed, you know, a baby bump for pregnancy. 700 years before this birth, God told his prophet, Isaiah, to tell the people, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. And then he went on to say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, when we read these words, what we are understanding that 700 years before this child was ever born, much was spoken of him. It was anticipated. But the prophets didn't predict that this was going to happen. God told the prophets, go tell the people, this is what's going to happen. So this anticipated child is a lot more than a child like you and I when we were born. There were many expectations by our parents, but it was much greater on his shoulders, the things that he was going to bear. So this child would be special. This child was given to bless all people. The child would be God's son. And this is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, starting with verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, patrolled to a man whose name was Joseph, and of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. 
And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have not known a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, when I'm preaching to my own congregation, I remind them of, of technology that we've learned today. And when we want to determine the father of a child, we don't do a maternity test. We do a paternity test. Because the father determines the blood type of the child. So if God the Holy Spirit is the one that impregnated Mary, then the blood of that child would be the blood of God, though he had a human form. Now indeed, uh, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this was known, this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. And in those days, if you could not have a child, you would be called barren. Many of the women at the time all hoped that they could be the one to conceive the Messiah or the Deliverer, the Savior. Mary was the one who was blessed among all women. For with God, nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now in those days, a betrothal was a legal binding. If you wanted to let someone go from a betrothed portion, you would have to divorce them. So we come to Joseph. Uh, this is in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make a public um, example, was minded to put her away secretly, or to divorce her. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared uh, to him in a dream, and saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and he shall call, not, shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. And he did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. The name Emmanuel means God with us, and the name Jesus means God brings salvation. And so Jesus is God with us who brings salvation for the whole world. And then again, 700 years prior, another prophet named Micah said, But you, Beth Bethlehem, Ephrathah, which means fruitful, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old, from everlasting. And going on to Luke chapter 2, it says, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census took place while Quirinius was governor in Syria. Now, Quirinius served from 6 B.C. to 4 B.C. And they believe that during this time is when, the, when Jesus was born. Not on zero, but 3 or 4 B.C. is when he was born. 
So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ, which means anointed one, the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Now at that time, traditionally, the birth of a firstborn son was a very big thing. And the father, if he could afford it, he would hire musicians that would go through the streets and announce that a son was born to this family. Joseph and Mary had no money. And it was God's son. So God sent his angels to proclaim the birth of his son. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Now, this is a very interesting thing. I don't know if you've known very many shepherds especially shepherds of sheep. When they're tending the sheep out in the field, they walk with the sheep, they lie down with the, uh, the sheep, they sleep with the sheep. So you can just imagine what these shepherds smelled like. These were workers, these were laborers. Not too many people, you know, when they met them in the marketplace, wanted to get close to the shepherd. But these, this is who God brought this great news to. These shepherds, being the type of individuals they were, went out and proclaimed the things that they heard from God. How many people believe the shepherds? So you see, God gave the greatest news to those who were the least worthy. And he continues to do the same thing today. None of us really are worthy of what God has to give to us. But he keeps proclaiming the news each and every year, each and every day, through those who know him. That's why John 3.16 is one of the things that you see most often. You'll see it at uh, different <coughs> games. Usually it's some guy that's wildly uh, made up and he's got John 3.16 in his chest and you say, what in the world does that mean? Well, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. At Christmas time, we all seek the gifts under the tree. But James uh, said it very well. He said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So this Christmas, Seek the gift that God sent to us, Jesus Christ, his son. Let's pray. Our heavenly and gracious Father, how we do praise you for what you've done so long ago. 
and that 2,000 years later we can take the words that have been preserved and read them and it feels like we were there too. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for what is real. Uh, we thank you for that which is, can be trusted. We thank uh, you for what has uh, brought a certainty uh, to us that you love us and that you want us back. And Jesus has done everything uh, that needs to be done so that we can come back into the family. What a joy that is. We thank you for this time together. We thank you that we can gather together as a community, as friends, uh, to take this time and stop and just remind ourselves one more time of the great things that you've done so long ago, but so very real today. We love you, dear Father, and we give you our praise and our thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I do want to invite you, if you have no 